A reading from the first letter of St. Paul of the Thessalonians. <clears throat> you yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our reception among you was not without effect. Rather, <coughs> after we had suffered and been insolently treated, as you know, in Philippi, we drew courage through our God to speak to you the gospel of God with much struggle. Our exhortation was not from delusion or impure motives, nor did it work through deception. But as we were judged worthy by God to be entrusted with the gospel, that is how we speak, not as trying to please men, but rather God, who judges our hearts. Nor indeed did we ever appear with flattering speech, as you know, or with pretext for greed, God is willingness, witness. Nor did we seek praise from men, either from you or from others, although we were able to impose our weight as apostles of Christ. Rather, we were gentle among you, as a nursing mother cares for her children. With such affection for you, we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our very selves as well, so dearly beloved had you become to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You have searched me, and you know me, Lord. You have searched me, and you know me, Lord. O oh Lord, you have proved me, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand, you understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize, with all my ways you are familiar. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O oh Lord, you know the whole of it. Behind me and before me you hem me in, you rest your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Word of God is living and effective, able to, to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, Lord. Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You pay tithes of mint and dill and cumin, and you have, and have neglected the weightier things of the law, judgment and mercy and fidelity. But these you should have done without neglecting the others. Blind guides who strain out the gnat and swallow the camel, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You cleanse the outside of cup and dish, but inside are full of plunder and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, cleanse first the inside of the cup, so that the outside also may be clean. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Morning. morning. Well, thank you for all the extra prayers yesterday since I was perfectly fine. And uh, it was Sandra that switched my day uh, because Father Lincoln has to be at a meeting with the bishop this morning. Uh, and I was perfectly happy with that because I knew today was the feast of St. Monica. And uh, I've always uh, liked St. Monica. And very much the reading today, especially the last part, where Jesus uh, 
is excoriating the Pharisees uh, who actually see themselves as quite virtuous. And he uses the example of the outside of the vessel being clean and the inside filthy. And then he goes on to say, so make the inside clean first and then you're, you're, you'll be better off with the outside. And it very much reminded me of that great quote from the Vatican Council, the, the decree of the liturgy, that I've shared before with you many times, and eventually you'll remember it yourself. But in that decree, the church says, to unbelievers, the church must ever preach faith, and to believers, repentance. That just hit me when I read it the first time. To unbelievers, the church must ever preach faith, and to believers, repentance. You know, the journey of repentance is a lifetime journey. It's one thing to lay claim to Jesus, but it takes a lifetime to allow his values to lay claim to our hearts. And the Pharisees didn't understand that. They thought they had arrived. They thought they had everything complete. And yet, they didn't. You know, that attitude of the Pharisees was brought home to me first as a very young seminarian. When I went into the seminary, the approach was there were three ways to the spiritual journey, purgative, illuminative, and unitive. And of course, I started in the purgative way with everyone else. And after my second year in the seminary, my confessor sat down with me and he grasped where I was. And I barely moved in the purgatives category. And I was insulted. I thought with all my efforts, I should at least be in the illuminative way. And it hit me that, you know, I was moving into that mistake of thinking I could take charge of the spiritual journey. I can make decisions about what I would like to do, but really it's God who gives the growth and the grace. That was further reinforced to me years ago when we used to advertise with what I call buttons. You know, now we tend to use t-shirts and sweatshirts. But when I was much younger, we did a lot with buttons. We put our messages on. If you were in high school and you rooted for a certain person for student council, you wore a button with his or her name. When you were rooting for political candidates, you proudly wore a button. And at one time, I came across a button that has never left me. The button was big, it was white, and it had block letters on it. It had 10 consonants and two vowels. And I said, what in the heck is that? Of course, it piqued my interest. So I asked the person, now, I wrote it out because I would never remember it otherwise. It was in four lines, white against black, P, B, P, W, M, A, G, I, F, W, M, Y. Who could figure that out? And so when I asked, the person said, it's the first letter for, of each word for, please be patient with me, as God is not finished with me yet. And I thought, that makes sense. That makes sense. Please be patient with me, because God isn't finished with me yet. You and I are all challenged to grow. And I have learned over the years to not be impatient over my growth. I want to be better. I want to grow. But I no longer stress over not achieving. 
I no longer stress it because I trust everything is under God's grace and God's care. So to you I would say, please, be patient with me. God is not finished with me yet or with you.